Hi, I'm Steve, and together with my wife, Courtney, we are Stream in Life. We travel the country in our 30-foot Airstream Classic full-time. And in this video, I'm going to show you how to work a full-time job from your RV. First, let's talk about internet. For most of us, if you work remotely, whether it's, in an, whether it's in an RV or in your home, you're probably going to need connectivity. So that's where we have a little MiFi device. This, this is essentially your router, like your Linksys router or your Netgear router that you might have at home. This is a Verizon Jetpack, and this acts just like the router, except um, you're not connecting to a cable or DSL line. Um, this just gets its uh, cell signal off the, the regular cell network. And like I said, we do have Verizon because that tends to be the most widespread service. Um, we also bought a grandfathered unlimited plan, which means we don't have to worry about how much data we use. Um, we typically use in the neighborhood of between 80 and 120 gigs a month, depending on how much we, we stream. Um, but for work purposes, unless you're streaming a lot or downloading a lot, you're probably not going to have a lot of problems with an unlimited plan. Uh, Verizon can throttle and, th and things like that. But um, that, that set aside, if you can find yourself in unlimited plan or close to unlimited plan, you're probably going to be okay. Or maybe your company will pay for your uh, network connectivity if they allow you to work remotely. Another thing that you'll have to keep in mind is when you travel around, you will probably need network access. Now, what, as good as Verizon is, they're not going to have uh, cell signal everywhere. Uh, so that might determine where you can stay. Some national parks might be a dead zone where you get nothing. So you might not be able to stay there. You might be able to do two or three days or maybe a weekend, but you're probably not going to spend a week or two in areas where there's no network uh, connectivity at all. So if you work full-time while you travel, your network co connectivity is probably going to limit where you can stay, and you'll just have to keep that in mind and, and be as proactive as you can through sources like Campendium and, and freecampsites.net and those kinds of resources so you know before you get there whether those places have decent cell signal or not. And for those places that are kind of borderline, um, what I highly, highly recommend is you install a cell booster. We have the uh, WeBoost 4GX that we have installed. We actually took down our TV antenna on top of our Airstream, and we put a directional antenna in its place, and that connects to our cell booster. And that does an amazing job. Um, I think a couple weeks ago, we were at one or two bars of 3G, and it gave us through two or three bars of 4G, which was very workable, stream anything uh, we, we want. So if you're... Traveling full-time and you're working full-time from your trailer, highly, highly recommend a cell booster because it's probably going to come in handy eventually. The second thing is I highly recommend two things, a workspace, a dedicated workspace, and also a routine. So for us, when we first bought this Airstream, I was working full-time. We were stationary at, at the time for the first year, but I was working full-time from this 200-square-foot Airstream, and we just had the, the dinette, the nook here. And that worked, but it was not ideal, especially because I like to have an external monitor, something big that I can look at, um, and it, that's pretty much on your dinner table. Um, so in our lifestyle is just my, my wife and I, we don't have kids. We don't tend to eat, uh, more, I don't know, officially, I guess at a table. So for us, that nook, that dinette, it really wasn't providing a lot of value for us. Um, but I really like to work from the, the Airstream. I do a lot of work online, so I want a dedicated workspace and that makes work so much easier. Um, so what we did is we installed a desk. We ripped the nook. So we had... Uh, a bench seat here, a bench seat here, and then the table in the middle. Uh, we ripped that completely out. There's a video about that too. Um, and we installed this guy here, which is a really nice dedicated workspace. So we lost our dinner table. We personally don't care about, about the dinner table. We get so much more value, or at least I get so much more value out of a dedicated workspace than we would a, a dinette or, or a nook. So that has really worked out for us and it makes me enjoy sitting here in front of my computer working. The second thing is routine. 
when you're traveling around, it's tough to establish a routine. It really is, because everything is different, especially if you travel fairly often. Uh, so what I would recommend, to the best of your ability, is to set times during the day that you work, whether it's the morning, afternoon, or evening, middle of the night, whatever, whatever works for you and what you've arranged with your, with your clients or boss, that's what you should do as much as you can. Now, there will be times where you might not have cell signal. There might be times where you're traveling and you just can't necessarily commit to your routine every single day. But really, that's true whether you work in an office or work from home, work from an RV. Those are very common problems. So I wouldn't necessarily lose any sleep over that. But as much as you can, get yourself into a routine. Make sure your client or boss knows exactly when they can expect you to work and stick to it the best you can because it's going to be easier on them and it's going to be easier on you because you know when you should be in front of your desk and when you should be outside in enjoying nature. So a quick note about the equipment that you might use, your computer equipment that you might use from your RV, which is a very small space. I have an external monitor simply because I really want that. Um, that an external monitor is certainly not required. However, you're probably going to have a laptop instead of a desktop. Not only do desktops take up more space, but typically desktops need AC power, which means your inverter will have to be on or you will have to be plugged in every single time you fire that bad boy up. But if you work on a laptop, then you can run off of the battery even if you're out in the middle of nowhere boondocking and you don't want to use that extra power. So laptops really make it more convenient when you're just running off of your batteries. In our case, we have a MacBook Pro and this is my workhorse machine where I do a lot of my video and photo uh, editing and things like that. I also have a Chromebook. This I don't really use for work too much. I use this for blogging, responding to email, browsing the web, that kind of a thing. So basically an everything machine, multimedia machine. So in your case, it's going to be completely dependent on what you do. Whatever uh, machine works best for you, go with it. But I would, I would recommend whenever possible, don't rely on a desktop when you're moving around because you're probably going to have a little bit more issues with that, especially with the size and also the power that it draws. And lastly, how do you move with all this equipment? You don't want it to rattle, rattle around or fall. So this monitor always stays on this desk. However, when we move, we simply flip the monitor down and secure it with bungee cords so it does not move at all. We place the laptops, both laptops, in our dog's bed underneath the desk here, which is a nice soft space. Those suckers are not moving anywhere and they're certainly not going to be damaged. This chair, which is a nice office chair, by the way, and I probably should have mentioned this before during my, during my talk about the workspace, a good, comfortable chair is absolutely necessary. Get as comfortable of a chair as you possibly can rather than, than like a folding chair or something, because that's probably going to get uncomfortable pretty quickly. But we were we move this chair completely into the desk where it actually touches the desk, faces that way. And then we also bungee this around the monitor and down under the desk. So everything is kind of wrapped up together and it doesn't move when we travel. So that's how to work full time while you're traveling in your Airstream or other RV. If you have any questions or if you do things differently, please comment below. We would love to hear them and I'm sure our viewers would love to hear how you do things differently or if you have any ideas that might make this even easier than we think it already is. And if you would like to follow our journey, please subscribe below. That's it for this video. Look out next week for another how-to video. Thanks guys. Bye.